focus of this session is going, actually going to be to get into the details of a balance sheet and we have realized before that the best way to understand a, understand a financial statement better is to actually look at a real balance sheet which we will do by looking at the Domino's balance sheet and we will also uh, get familiar with this you know fundamental basic concept on building a balance sheet called double entry balancing and we'll go over what both those are and you'll better understand this whole financial crisis when you're done with this session so uh, you, you, you know you, you again remember that you know going back here your this is your income statement that we built a few classes back the, this talks about the operations of a company but doesn't really give you this the financial situation of a company the cash balances and things like that and you obviously remember this simple balance sheet that we built this balance sheet is actually talk, gives you about the full financial snapshot of a company the cash how much inventory the company owns the, how much money the company has to give other people uh, so on and so forth now and 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 you know I I keep insisting there's only a simple balance sheet so we're gonna go into a real one a, a, the Domino's balance sheet where is there it is okay and we're gonna see how different is this and what is the difference you know you're already beginning to see oh my God this looks nothing like the balance sheet Binny taught me last class what is happening patience we'll go through this and you'll understand it's not that different okay. Uh, let, let's let me keep the other one also open for quick comparison right here okay so let's start off here and to begin with you remember I said a balance sheet is the status of a company as of a specific date right here you see as of March 31st 2005 these are the balances of the company and that goes on from 05 06 07 08 09 excuse me so for five years um, the company has been kind enough to lay it right next to each other, so it's helpful in our, uh, you know, our, our certificate program here. So let's take the first one, gross block. And once again, these numbers are in millions. So the best way to read this is this is 609 million rupees. Uh, 609 million rupees is about 60 crores, 60, 61 crores almost, 60 crores, 67 crores, 85 crores. Uh, that is the best that that's how you should uh, read this all right so gross block is really nothing but uh, all the literally everything the company owns in terms of hard assets like furniture ovens uh, let's see you know you know like machinery inventory all these things that we said non-current assets that is what Domino's is calling gross block in their whole balance sheet okay and then there's this term you're saying less depreciation we have not covered that we'll come back to that later but as of now just just think of this as gross block and then from the from the value of the equipment they're actually subtracting how old is that equipment so it's worth how much today they're subtracting that but let's forget that for now let's come back to that later just focus on gross block so 60 crores 67 crores and you know the, the 170 crores this has been just going up then let's look at this line right here. This looks interesting, right? It says capital work in progress, including capital advances. What that essentially means is, uh, apart from all the uh, you know equipment and all that that Domino's owns, Domino's is also expanding like crazy. We saw last class that their revenues were growing at fifty percent, right? You remember this? I'm going to go back to that income statement of Domino's. Uh, and their the income statement of Domino's. There you go, right? And uh, no, actually, yeah, there it is. So we we saw how Domino's was growing at fifty percent, thirty three percent, and the only way the company is growing that that fast is because they're expanding the company super fast. They're building a lot of new stores, and and all that is happening. So that is the capital work in progress money being spent on new stores new equipment new furnitures and, and, and all of that thing that is that thing right here and that is again a non-current asset it's a fixed asset because you know furniture and stores and electric you know light fixtures and interiors you can't sell it in two days and get your cash back they're invested they're fixed it they're not very liquid that's that's that uh, we will skip this again this line statement because that ties to this thing called depreciation which we'll cover in a couple of sessions and and that and there you go that is the combination of all their fixed assets and that is your number right there then you come down to their current assets 
uh, we, we spoke uh, last session where we said current assets are nothing but the liquid assets, assets that the company can sell right now. Pick up a phone call and say sell that and you'll, you'll get your cash in like a day or two days or something like that. Inventories. You know, Domino's probably has one week or two weeks inventory of cheese, oil, uh, dove, vegetables, and chicken, and uh, I don't I, whatever other ketchup and all of those things that Domino's sells. They're storing it in some godown, and that's on your balance sheet. Now let's go and see. Did we have that on our balance sheet? Well, we actually put. Uh, inventory in our non-current assets. Now that really depends what kind of a company you are. If you are, if you are like a, uh, you know, I, I guess, uh, you know, what kind of inventory it is. If it's a long-term inventory, if you're going to use it much later, it probably goes in non-current assets, or sometimes it stays in your current assets. Okay, um, that that's inventory, and then this whole thing called sundry debtors. That essentially is. The amount of money other people owe Domino's, you know, maybe Domino's delivered, uh, you know, a, a bunch of pizzas and people are yet to pay them for some things, or you know, there could be many reasons why different people owe money to Domino's. Maybe they they invested in some smaller company and they have to get some portion of the revenue out of them back. Uh, all of that is what is called sundry debtors. Cash and bank balance. We saw that in our last session. Cash and bank balance is nothing but. Um, the amount of cash you have in your bank, the amount of money you have in your stocks, your fixed deposit and, and, and all of that. Uh, once again, loans and advances is again a current asset. Uh, loans and advances is really big amounts of money that people owe dominoes. You know, sundry debtors are essentially small amounts of money you know, that people owe dominoes. Uh, loans and advances is probably dominoes is uh, given a loan to one of your suppliers. Maybe, maybe the, the supplier, the vendor from where Domino's buys its uh, vegetables or its uh, uh, ketchup, uh, Dom Domino's probably, uh, you know, to finance their operations, Domino's probably gives them some kind of advance and gets his goods and, and that is probably what is under this whole loans and advances. And all this put together is the current assets. You know, essentially, this is the the money that is liquid for Domino's. The Domino's, you know, with a couple of phone calls, can get this money back into the company. Now we go to the liabilities. The first one Domino's has here is called secured loans. We know that loan that is the company owes somebody that is called a liability. Now, what is a secured loan? A secured loan is nothing but a loan. That has got a guarantee. Maybe, maybe Domino said, "Okay, my head office in Delhi. I don't know where the head office is, but my head office is in Delhi. I'm going to pledge my head office. Please give me 15 crores." That's called a secured loan, where you're pledging something. You're pledging a tangible property to get a loan. Unsecured loan, you know, that's been going down, but they also seem to have unsecured loans where you're getting loans, small amounts though, but you don't have to pledge anything to, the, to get that money. And these are all uh, under current liabilities and, and provisions. So you see they're not really broken down their liabilities as current liabilities and non-current li li liabilities. I suspect a, a lot of these provisions are probably non-current liabilities. They've just clubbed it together here into current liabilities and uh, and provisions. Provisions are typically uh, you know, money that the company keeps aside for some kind of uh, expected uh, uh, expenses like some kind of tax expense that the, the company has to pay in three months the company will keep aside that money and that probably uh, goes under this whole provisions okay and then we finally come to the last part of um, this balance sheet which is the share capital the share capital is really nothing but the, the, another term for the share capital is called paid up capital yes P A I D U P paid up capital and that is really nothing but the amount of money promoters and investors have pumped into the company so as of now it looks like 500 no sorry 58 crores has been invested into the company by the and that's why this number doesn't change they probably invested 58 crores sometime before and after that the company has been funding its operations through its internal internal uh, profits and by borrowing money and maybe sometime initially before uh, 2006 uh, th through a period of time roughly about 58 crores was invested in the company that that, that was the reserves are really nothing but uh, every year when the company makes a profit now for example let's go to this income statement right you see here every year when Domino's makes a profit the, the management of the company can decide 
if they want to give those profits away as dividends to the shareholders or should they save up the profits for future use. This statement basically says the company, which is Domino's, is at least partially saving up its profits in what is called reserves. So, you know, there's probably some upcoming expense for, you know, 200 stores opening up or some kind of expense that Domino's is anticipating and they're saving up this money as reserves. And this is actually one, you know, very popular way where you can analyze how efficiently a company is being done. You basically, you know, figure out is a company uh, retaining their earnings, are they keeping the money to themselves or are they giving out to the shareholders? Then you figure out, okay, if, they, if, if, if Domino's is actually keeping the money to themselves, then they better make good use of that money, right? You can't keep money to yourself and your business can't be going down. Your business better be going up. And that is fortunately happening in Domino's case, uh, but that's one, one good way to see how efficiently a company is being done in that if net income is being retained by the company, it's being kept by the company, then the revenue should be going up, you know, pretty significantly based on how much they're, they're, they're retaining. So now, uh, you know, what we're going to do is we've almost spent 20 minutes in the session. So we are going to wind up this session right now. And uh, I also said we'll discuss the whole double entry bookkeeping. We're going to discuss that in the next session. So in this session, uh, at the end of the session, you have a fairly good idea what this economic collapse was all about. Why did that happen? Why is it a balance sheet recession? You also know how to read a real company's balance sheet, how to look at trends in the balance sheet and, uh, and all of that. Thank you very much. I'll see you uh, very soon at the next session.